There you go. Okay. Hello and uh, welcome back. It's late, it's midnight, and uh, my babies are asleep. So it gives me a chance to actually record. And, uh, and yeah, uh, we can get into uh, some MATLAB. Today what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at some interpolation problems. Uh, and so I'm just going to set up the Van der Waals matrix with this lecture and, uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, um, and make uh, a quick little interpolation scheme and evaluate it with polynomials. Um, yeah, it's not actually too hard to set up, but I'll walk you through uh, how to sample a function, how to, how to make a function, how to sample a function. Uh, and, um, and then how to make sort of an interpolant. And, um, and so here, like I said, we're going to be using the Van der Waals approach, which means we're going to make a matrix, the Van der Waals matrix, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and invert it. And once we do that, we'll have the coefficients for our polynomials. Um, it's, uh, it shouldn't take too long to do, uh, and at the end we'll also try to show uh, Runge's example uh, of um, a divergent uh, sequence of uh, interpolating polynomials. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'll go ahead, make sure the mic's on, yep, and record. Okay, so I, uh, yeah, let's get this going. It might seem a little cheesy to do that, and, and it is a little bit, but that gives me chirps on my microphone so that I can align the audio and, and, and my mic here and up there. I, and so that I can make sure the typing all stays aligned too. Okay, so uh, like any good example, uh, first of all, let's go ahead and just save this file and I'll just call this, uh, say, interpolation uh, Vandermond style. And, uh, and yeah, so um, let's put a comment in here. So uh, this is a script to demonstrate uh, interpolation. Uh, using uh, the Vandermond van method for obtaining interpolating polynomials. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and make a function. Uh, this is our function to interpolate. So I'm just going to make something nice in here, so I'm just going to call this f and I'm making a function of x, that's what the at does. It says in here we're going to put x and then it's going to give us a function out of it. Uh, and let's just uh, make up something nice. Um, so uh, let's say, I'm going to say sine of uh, 2 times x plus uh, uh, cosine of x, right? And, uh, and then uh, let's just go ahead and do a quick plot of that. Um, so I'm going to come up with, uh, so I'm going to put a plot. Eventually it's going to go at the end of the program. Uh, but let's just go ahead and see. Uh, we'll build this up one at a time. So uh, to plot it, we're just going to say t is going to go from, say, 0 to, um, well, let's say we have a period of about 2 pi, um, because sine of 2x has a period of pi, and sine, cosine of x has a period of 2 pi. So uh, let's go... Uh, 0.1 increments up to 2 times pi, right? And um, and so then we're going to have uh, our uh, y is going to be our output. So this is um, sort of our, our t-axis or x-axis axis, uh, points. And uh, this is going to be uh, our y-axis points. These are just comments. They don't really do anything to the code, but it tells us later what's going to happen. So in for y, I'm just going to put f of t. This doesn't always work, but I'm hoping it will this time. So it's going to apply f to every single uh, one of the elements here. So if you don't remember, uh, what does t give us? Uh, it should give us uh, increments of uh, uh, 
all the way up to 2 pi, so 6.2. Uh, okay, uh, I didn't quite get there, but um, it got as close as it could without going over. And so, uh, so it's incrementing at 0.1 uh, each time, and uh, it looks like it got up to 6.2. And this is 6.1, 6.0, etc., etc. Okay, and now if I say want, so if I run the script real quick, boop, uh, then um, it's now created this function, made this t, and applied f to that t. If I take a look at y, it gives us uh, a whole bunch of different columns. I don't know if these match up to what they should be yet, uh, but we'll see when we plot it. It should be sort of sinusoidy if we, as we look. That's a mathematical term there. All right, so let's take a look at uh, plot, t, y, and uh, let's make a new figure. You don't have to put figure in here. It'll automatically do it, but I like to have control of that. So, um, so that's what I do. All right, so let's go ahead and plot that and see what we get. Boop, and there we go. Okay, uh, so it goes up to here. Uh, it looks like the window goes a little bit further than it needs to, um, but it stopped here, and this is at 6.2 and 0.830. All right, so uh, yeah, that looks sinusoidy. Uh, it's good enough for me. Um, if you really want to see if it actually works, let's take this out for a second and run the code again. Uh, and now it's a proper cosine. So, uh, so we're getting what we should expect. What we should expect. Um, and so there we go. Okay. So now we have a function, and uh, and we have a way of plotting it. Now, what I'd really like to do is I would like to go in and come up with a polynomial plot. I it's sort of a polynomial interpolation of this. So what we're going to need is one, we're going to need interpolation sites. Um, I'm going to go with evenly spaced points. I, I don't want to, so I'm going to interpolate from, uh, say, interp, uh, I'll just call these interp underscore t. And I'll interpolate from zero, uh, and let's just do 0 0.5 uh, up to two times pi, All right? So these are extra points I'm making uh, in here, and um, and let's see the interpolation sites one. So I'll call this interp y is equal to f of t uh, interp t. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I, I'm talking about my my x values or my t values for my interpolation. And, uh, and here I'm gonna just take a look and see what the y values are that comes out of it. Um, now, I could just plot these on their own, but that wouldn't look very nice. Uh, so I'd like to plot them with the same, uh, on the same plot. And the way you do this is you put a hold on your plot. If I just did another plot, it would replace the whole thing. So for instance, uh, well, let's, let's do it proper first. So now I'm gonna plot uh, interp t and then interp y, right? And let's see what we get. Uh, oh, and I'm going to put something else on there. Uh, I want it to be uh, in little circles. Uh, let's see if that works. Boop. And there we go. So you see we end up with little circles here uh, along my uh, along my path. And these are all the interpolation sites that we're going to be trying to match up. Okay. Uh, now you see if I didn't put on hold, uh, then what would end up happening is it would overwrite the last plot. So as long as I put hold on here, uh, it'll keep it going. Uh, and just to be polite, you should probably put hold off. Uh, you don't really need to, but uh, especially since we're starting a new figure each time. But if you forgot to put a new figure here, uh, then um, it would keep, it would plot on top of that last step. So just keep that from happening. Okay, so what do we have so far? We have a function, uh, which is sine of 2x plus cosine of x. Looks good to me. And uh, we have interpolation sites, but now we need to make interpolating polynomial, right? So, uh, and that's where all the fun is. So, uh, interpolating polynomial. All right, so uh, first thing we need to do is I'm gonna tab this over, uh, is I'm gonna say that we need to make a van der Waals matrix. Okay, uh, so how am I gonna make this van der Waals matrix? I'm just gonna use some clever MATLAB tricks. So uh, if you follow me down to the, uh, the little text area here, um, I'm going to show you a couple things. So uh, let's take a look at what, if, what happens if I do uh, take a look at the matrix, uh, I'll call this M, uh, or the row vector M, and if I put it in, I get M is equal to 1, 2, 3, or 1, 2, 4. 
Right, now, uh, take a look at what happens when I do m squared. I get an error. Uh, and the reason why I get an error is because you can't multiply a row vector times a row vector. If you had linear algebra, if you want to multiply two vectors, it better be a row times a column, right? Uh, but what you can do in MATLAB is I put a point and then a, and then a caret. Uh, that's what that little shift six is called. Um, then in, instead of treating this like a vector multiplication, it's actually going to do it entry-wise, which means it's going to apply a squaring to each one of the elements in there. So now, instead of 1, 2, 4 that I got up here, I'm now getting 1, 4, 16. Okay, so, uh, so that's pretty cool. But now check out what happens when I do this. So instead of putting uh, the 2 there, uh, uh, instead, so before, I basically had this. I had 1, 2, 4, and then I raised it like that, right? And that's what gave me this. But what you can do is you can turn that on its head. So instead, I can say, uh, I want to take a look at 2, and I'm going to do uh, the point caret, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. Uh, or let's say 0, 1, 2. And let's see what happens. It gives me 1, 2, 4. It basically applied the exponential to 2 uh, each time, and then put it, each one of those entries into the, the column vector. So that makes it really easy for what I want to do here. So for instance, um, I want to have, say, a polynomial of degree n. Well, I basically need, remember the Vanderbilt matrix, it's gonna, each row is gonna have exponentiated uh, of the interpolation inside. So it's gonna go one, x1, x1 squared, x2, no, sorry, <laughs> x1 cubed, x1 to the fourth, etc. Uh, all the way up until you get up to n uh, up to n, when you have n plus one interpolation sites. Um, this is how many, the inter number of interpolation sites we have is interp t, um, and so we should go ahead and write that down. So, uh, uh, number of interpolation sites, that is a really long num interp, <laughs> number of interpolation sites. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that this is now going to be uh, the however many points are inside of interp t, right? Okay. So now I want to make uh, row vectors that are um, going to be that uh, that size. Um, so first of all, we need to take um, each member of interp t, and so we need to make a row for each one of those. So I'm just going to go four, uh, i is equal to one to uh, the number of interpolating sites. All right, so that's the way we start there. Um, and I'm going to make a, another blank matrix, I'm going to call it a Vandermond matrix, and I'm just going to make an empty matrix. This is maybe not the best practice, but it's easy, uh, it, it's quick and dirty and it gets the job done. And so we're going to go with that. Um, usually what you should designate how big the matrix should be, and usually you do this with like a zeros matrix or something like that. Um, this just creates an empty matrix and then it has to go back and rewrite memory over and over again. It can slow things down, but it, it, programmatically it works. Um, if you were in C or something like that, uh, man, I would tell you just really don't do stuff like that. But this is MATLAB. Uh, MATLAB isn't that picky. Uh, okay. so. In each one of these rows, we need to put that exponentiated 1, x1, x1 squared, etc. And so, uh, and what is x1? Well, x1 is going to be uh, what these um, interpolating sites are. So, interp t uh, of i. And that's going to be uh, x1. Uh, so, I need to uh, do that whole exponentiation thing that I just did here. And um, and I'm going to do, do it this way. I'm going to tell it to exponentiate from zero to uh, the number of interp uh, minus one. Okay, when you just put the parentheses here and you don't put anything in between, uh, that just means it's gonna go by integer number. So it's gonna go zero, one, two, all the way up until it gets to interp minus one. I'm doing interp minus one because remember for a polynomial, uh, uh, for interpolating n plus one points, we wanted polynomial of degree n. So uh, n plus 1 is the number of interpolating points, and so uh, we need to subtract by 1. Okay, 
So that gives me a row. What do I want to do with it? Well, uh, so I'm basically going to put in the Vandermond matrix. Vandermond matrix. Uh, how do I do that? Well, I I say, well, I want it to go into the Vandermond matrix. So the ma Vandermond matrix is going to be the Vandermond matrix, again, uh, adding one extra row. When you put a comma, it's going to make another... Uh, when you put a comma, it makes... It puts it into the next column, but when you put a semicolon, it puts it on the next row, right? And there we go. Put a semicolon because we don't want this to show up when we press play. All right, so end there. Good. All right, good so far. Uh, now, uh, now we actually need to figure out what the weights are. How we figure out the weights? Well, we make take our vector of uh, interpolating points, and we hit it with the inverse of the van der Waals matrix. Now, remember though. Uh, this is actually a row vector uh, because it was applied to a row vector, and so uh, that's what this does. And so I need to make that a column vector. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my weights are uh, the van der Waals, the inverse of the van der Waals matrix, van der Waals matrix uh, times uh, interp underscore y. I put a little apostrophe there. Apostrophe changes it from row vector to a column vector. And uh, inverse is the tells us to take the inverse of whatever matrix it is here, right? So that's good. And I'm getting an error here. What does this tell me? Okay, so MATLAB is telling me that inverse might not be the fastest. Uh, let's not overcomplicate it here. Uh, there's also PINV for when uh, you want to use SVD in order to uh, compute the inverse, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so I got my weights. Uh, now let's make the polynomial. All right, so what do we do so far? So we took our interpolation sites and the number that we had here, and uh, we made uh, a Vandermond matrix that was empty, and we filled in one row at a time uh, until we got to the until we did all of the interpolation points. Uh, and so we made that row vector just like we talked about, and we, so we made the Van der Waals matrix. Uh, we need to find the weights that go on the monomials, 1x, x squared, x cubed, etc. And, uh, and, and to do that, we uh, invert the Van der Waals matrix against the, uh, interp the, the y values from the interpolation uh, scheme. And we put a apostrophe there to make sure it's a column vector. Okay. So, uh, now, uh, what do we have? Uh, so I'm going to do the interpolating polynomial. Uh, so I'll just put polynomial because uh, interp. Uh, and so let's see what we get. So it's going to be at x. Uh, so it's going to be some function of x. And so I'm going to take x and I'm going to raise it uh, just like I was doing with this. And so I'm just going to copy this here. Um, so this is going to give me a row vector, uh, just like before, and um, and now I'm going to have a row, and now I'm going to hit it against the column of weights that we just made, and that should give me uh, my polynomial. Uh, so it's just going to basically a weight is going to hit against each one of the monomials, and when you sum those together, that gives you the polynomial. Okay, so uh, so at this point everything should be done. And, uh, and now we just need to go ahead and plot our polynomial. So I'm gonna go ahead and plot, uh, well, actually, <laughs> uh, we need to come up with y values to, to do all this on, but honestly, I can do that all at once, really, truly. So put hold back on so we can plot yet another thing onto our figure. And, um, and so we're gonna be taking a look at t, and we're gonna look at the polynomial uh, that is interpolating uh, all of our, all of these guys. So we want to we want to evaluate the new interpolating polynomial on all the same t values that we did for this guy. So we can sort of compare them one one on one. If I just did the polynomial on on these guys, uh, then we would only have the points that were interpolated, and that's no use to anybody. Okay, so I think that's good. And like a good citizen, I put uh, hold off. Right, and I broke it. Uh, what happened here? Oh, I misspelled length. Uh, some of you uh, probably noticed that 
as we were going. Uh, that is a th there. Okay, hopefully that was the only problem. Boop. Uh, nope, there's another problem. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Matrix dimensions must agree. Uh, is always something like that. Okay. Uh, all right, so uh, not to worry. I told you it's not always going to work. Um, sometimes uh, it treats the input here as a matrix and then it gets kind of fussy. Um, so I'm just going to go and put one there. So I'm saying this random vector I put into your into you, I would like you to evaluate it at the first entry of it. And since all we're putting the scalar in there, uh, that, that's going to work. Um, but now uh, other problems are going to come up. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. Uh, so we put the t was a row vector was a row vector we put in there, and now uh, we're telling it to do other things to it. Okay, so we can't do it as slick as I hoped. Um, so let's go ahead, and sometimes you just have to do it this way. Um, so uh, plot polynomial. Okay, so this is how you get around this. So I'm going to say z is uh, zeros, and we're going to say um, we're going to have his number of zeros. We're going to have one row. Yeah. Uh, oops, did not mean to push that button. Uh, we're going to have one row, and I would like it to go to the length of t. All right. So we're going to basically come up with an output vector and do what happens here. We're just going to do it manually. All right. And so doing that, and now let's take a look. Uh, we're gonna look at four. Uh, I goes from one to uh, length of t. And, and, uh, and now let's go ahead and just evaluate. So I'm gonna say z i should be equal to uh, whatever this is um, at t of i. Okay, so we're just doing this one at a time. We're making sure all this going into the polynomial interpolation program uh, function is just a scalar. Okay, uh, and then we're going to store it into z. And now instead of here, instead of having polynomial t, I just put z. Okay, and everything should work out at this point. There we go. And wow, that worked out really good. Um, you can't tell the difference because it's really, really small. Here, let me show you. Uh, it looks like it's screwing up a little bit over here. So, uh, can I zoom in? Zoom in, please. Thank you. All right, so here we go. This blue, remember, was uh, the um, the function we're trying to approximate, and this interpolation is going to be this yellow guy. And uh, and yeah, I mean, the yellow guy just seems to cover entirely the blue guy. You can't even see a difference except at sort of this endpoint here. Uh, so that's great, and that's just because we don't have another side to fix that on. So, I mean, my job's done. I mean, I can just go home. Uh, why don't we actually just take, uh, make this a little coarser so we can see it screw up a little bit. Uh, this is embarrassing. Uh, all right, so uh, let's sample it every two. Uh, so uh, let's see what we get. Okay, oh man, that's horrible. Uh, I don't even know what we're trying to do here. Uh, so uh, this is my interpolating polynomial. It is interpolating all of these sites that we marked. Uh, yellow is a really unfortunate sort of color, huh? Uh, maybe I should put that in red. Here, I'll fix that. Uh, plot Z, and uh, make this red. I think that'll work great. Yeah, red works better. Okay, so that's our interpolating polynomial, and yeah, that's, uh... Ah, oh, that's terrible. I mean, using one, two, three, four sites, I mean, you know, it's not even, it's not even close. I right. should just go home. All right, uh, then we can uh, improve this, uh, say, do one, and so since we're going to do uh, two pi, it means we're going to have about six points, something. So one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, counted zero. Uh, so, okay, so this is a little bit better, right? Uh, it is getting closer with my interpolation, and yeah, that's the sort of thing we like. Um, now let's take a look if we have 0 0.5, and um, boom, that's, that's fantastic. This is where we started. Uh, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 uh, interpolation points. And, uh, and yeah, we have practically a, a perfect uh, matchup with our function. Um, so yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty good. Uh, so now, now we know that this should actually be converging pretty quick, um, just because 
uh, we're talking about sine and cosine, which are infinitely differentiable. And, and even though we have a 2x in here, that's going to make uh, it not, say, a bounded derivative for all of them. It still doesn't grow that fast compared to the factorial of convergence rate that we saw in the lecture. So, um, so yeah, so that's sort of validating uh, that theorem. Um, but okay, uh, but we know that there are some problems that come up otherwise. Uh, and one example is in Runge's function. And so, uh, so yeah, so let me save this real quick and I'm gonna save another copy. Um, see, save as, and uh, let's put Runge. Okay, so if you remember Runge's function is one divided by one, pl one plus 25 uh, times x squared, right? So uh, hopefully this, uh, this might cause problems, but uh, in the same way that the other one did, but we'll see. Um, so if I go ahead and uh, try to do something here, uh, let me just comment out um, very quickly, uh, you know, these guys. Um, so we have, because I just want to show you what this looks like without futzing with uh, interpolation. So, do, do. let's go ahead and get a plot of that, too. Let's see. Oh, it broke. Yep, that's exactly what I thought would happen. Uh, so it's trying to put t into the x squared, and it's not liking that. So uh, let's go back, and uh, if we're going, to, we're going to have to do the same game that we did here for z. We're going to have to do that for y now. So this doesn't work out for us anymore. So we're gonna say, why are these guys? And why is this? And this uh, polynomial interpolation is just f. Okay. And uh, and again, just gonna comment out. And comment this out. Command slash, by the way, uh, does that. Uh, there's you could also just push this button. But yeah, basically we hover over it, it tells us what the comment the command is. Alright, and let's kill this. Boop. There we go. Alright, let's push play. Ah I that bar. Alright, uh line fifteen. Oh, that's not even it's not even our code. Uh here. Let's see. Oh, I'm doing that again here. Okay, so uh okay, just comment this out. It's not working for us anyway. All right, now let's try. Uh, what? I still have FT. I thought I got rid of it. All right. Oh, I didn't delete this line. There we go. Okay. Now, ta-da! Runge's function. Super exciting. Right. Uh, that's that. That's that sarcastic. Um, okay. Let's take a look at from negative one to, uh, or say negative two to two, and see what we get. Right, uh, there we go, a little bit better. Uh, resolution isn't too great. That should be a flat uh, top there. Um, but uh, but then again, we're, we're not actually sampling that low of a frequency. If I do it, like, let's say, uh, zero, one. Uh, okay, now I see it's smoothing out a little bit. Um, but for the interest of time, maybe that wouldn't be the best. Um, eh, we'll leave it. Okay, so cool. Uh, all right, so. How do you uncomment? Well, it's the same way. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, that's not how you uncomment. I'm just going to undo a whole bunch of stuff. Doom, doom, doom. Okay. And one, two. This is a problem when you comment things out that you mean to bring back. Okay. Uh, this is something we're going to have to fix. Uh, just because we can't apply F to a vector anymore. Um, and this uh, we already got rid of, and we want this to be from negative 2 up to 2. Okay, cool. So, uh, so let's fix this bit first. All right, up here, uh, we're going to do 4i is equal to 1 to length of interp t. Uh, we're going to do stuff. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to say that this guy is zeros. Uh, one and interp t uh, length, so length. Well, 
Well, that's frustrating. <sighs> okay, so I'm back. Um, and you don't even know I, I disappeared, um, but apparently my new camera decides to chop off videos at 30 minutes, which is gonna be a problem for us. But we'll keep chugging along. Okay, so, uh, so we're in the middle of this, and we were trying to do, uh, uh, just fill in this interp z, uh, interp y uh, points. And so interp y of i should be equal to f at interp t at i. Okay, so all the cleverness that we did before, we just applied f to the, it's not working, and that's because we're squaring whatever we're putting in. And so it sees a row vector that we put in there, and instead of attacking it entry-wise, it just tries to do it all at once. So, I could probably have changed it a bit, but, you know, I'm just trying to show you the least headache, uh, or least tricky way of going about doing that. Okay, so at this point I should be able to do uh, interpolation. Um, now, we're going to interpolate now from negative 2 to 2, and, uh, and let's just start with, um, we'll sample it very coarsely at, say, 1. All right, so let's see what we get. Okay, so uh, here we go. Uh, so at every one uh, step, we're going from that's one, two, three, four, five interpolation sites, and um, and yeah, so that that works. Um, let's see if I double them. So uh, zero point five. Um, okay, so. Now I see I have more points, but things are getting kind of weird. It's also getting a little choppy, you know. I, I think for my own uh, um, mental health, I think we're going to increase the resolution so that now we get smoother plots. Looks nicer, right? You know, we're putting this on YouTube for crying out loud. I mean, you know how everything is to be polished up here. Okay, but something to see and something that we're worried about is this. This is getting really big. We saw when we had this many interpolation sites on the last function, it converged almost entirely. I mean, it was like practically no error. Uh, but now we have these dramatically big error points. And um, now we know, because we were told that that's what was gonna happen. But now let's double the number of interpolation points. So I'm divide closing the spacing uh, by half yet again. And, uh, and yeah, it looks like now we can't even see that bump anymore. Uh, we have dropped down to minus 70 here, and you know what? You know, this is taking like zero computation time, so let's uh, divide it by two again, and boom! Now it's up to 10 to the 5. I mean, this looks completely flat now. And uh, and yeah, that's that's not good. Um, let's see, 0, 1, 2, 5, 10 times. What happens? Bam, 10 to the 18. I mean, you can't even trust this. This is, this is, this is horrible. Um, I mean, I mean, even numerically it's gotten bad. I mean, like, this should be an even function, uh, but it's not. <laughs> um, the polynomial is, like, doing two different things on either side here. Uh, but yeah, so that shows you that sort of interpolation uh, at equally spaced points breaks down for Runge's function. Um, now, on the other hand, if I were to, say, interpolate at um, uh, the... Um, can't think right now. It is nearly midnight. Um, so if I just took a look at the cosine of these points, I think that's what that should give me the answer I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. Found it. So what we're looking for are Chevy Chef nodes. Um, I was just being dumb. I knew it was cosine of something. Um, and so this is for the interval negative one to one uh, that the interpolation is, and we can always rescale it. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and code this up real quick. Uh, that only takes like a handful of seconds. Um, yeah, okay, these are my interpolation sites. So uh, the way we do it, uh, so it's not just code. No. Oh. Yeah, I am stupid. Okay. So, uh, this. Sh All right. So, uh, 
It is really late, and I should not have made that mistake. That was just dumb. Okay, so for the Chevy Chev uh, points, I uh, what we're gonna be looking at is really a cosine of two times k. I'm just gonna put a dummy k here divided by uh, two times. Uh, we're going to say capital N, uh, by 2 times capital N, uh, then that quantity times pi. And just for good practice, let me put pi out front so everything looks nice. Okay, so uh, we need to find whatever N is. I'm going to say N is going to be 5 for now. That tells me a number of interpolation sites I'm going to have. And instead of K, I'm going to put uh, going from uh, 1 up to N. And uh, I remember up here, we should have 2k minus one, right? And so uh, that's what we have going. So this is basically I'm gonna run through each one of these terms and uh, tell me five, that's fine. Uh, it's just gonna be five interpolation points. So now let's try it. And boom, I get something. All right, so I'm gonna get from, it looks like I have negative one, 0.5, zero, uh, about 0.5 and one. It isn't actually 0.5, it's whatever cosine of that is, so 0.57. Uh, okay, good, so now we're in our business. So now we're interpolating again. Uh, but again, we, we want this to go from negative two to two. So I multiply that by two, and this is what we get. Much better. Okay, so now let's go and see what happens as I increase the number of interpolation sites we have. So five, let's do 10, and double it. Uh, boom. Uh, so we get this. Uh, it's kind of screwing up around the peak, uh, but otherwise uh, we're not getting these huge uh, variations on the other side anymore, which is really nice. Um, now let's go to uh, double that, so go up to 20, and boom, looks like we're starting to get that middle peak there again. That's really good. And uh, and these guys are staying stable. So it's, this is like magic, right? I mean, that last um, interpolation that we had, the, the sides were going like crazy, up and down. And um, yeah, that that's not happening now. That's awesome. Uh, now, uh, let's take it up to 30 and see what we get. Uh, again, uh, better and better. Uh, it's staying stable out here, stable here, and it's getting closer there. And so, um, let's try to multiply it by 10. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay, that's a problem. But don't panic. That's probably a rounding errors, an accumulation of rounding errors that happens, that sort of thing. Um, I, I am sorry, I shouldn't have shown you that. Um, that should, let's change this to 60, going from 30 to 60, see what we get. Ah, uh, that's not good either. Okay. So eventually rounding areas catch up with you. Um, but otherwise, uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, let's see if we can do 40. I just want to see that peak gap, that gap close there. So 40, 40 is good. Uh, see, can't do 50 without it blowing up on me? Uh, nope, nope, can't do 50. Uh, with 45. If you're not, if your interpolation scheme isn't working out well by the time you hit 40 interpolation points, you might be in trouble. Uh, so, uh, 45 is not working either. All right. So, uh, say 35. There you go. Okay. Good. 35 put a point right there at the the peak. So it's kind of cheating. But there you go. Uh, that's uh, a, uh, an improvement. And so here we end up having to use the Chebyshev nodes uh, for Runge's function to actually get convergence because uniformly space points don't work. Uh, I think there are functions, you can, for any set of points, you can find a function where the interpolation is going to blow up just like Runge's function. Uh, so there's nothing special about Chebyshev points, they just happen to work better for uh, Runge's function. And there's particular reasons why. Um, and, uh, and so for their own particular class of uh, points, uh, for each set of points, there's a class of functions where they work well. Um, and so, so yeah, so that demonstrates that. In any case, that was a lot of troubleshooting right there at the end, and that was kind of frustrating. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and call it. And, uh, and yeah, thank you for hanging in there with me. And I'm probably going to edit the video so it doesn't look quite as terrible. Um, but yeah, all right, thanks, and uh, I'll see you next time.